you're wrong about Christianity. Do you think that was a little too harsh? Yeah, yeah, like that's a little too extreme. Yes, extreme. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'm gonna do it again here. You might be wrong about Christianity. I think that was a little bit. You still think? Okay, a little too hard. Okay. Here are three misconceptions you might have about Christianity. I still think it's a little. Yeah, we gotta go a little bit more upbeat. Hey guys, how's it going? Here are three misconceptions about Christianity. Nah, that's still not right. It's too uppity. It's too, like, it's it's a little bit serious, but it's kind of fun. Like, it's a, yeah, we got it. Okay, we'll try it again here. Today, we're talking about three misconceptions you might have about Christianity. Hey guys, what's up? It's Isaac, and welcome to Daily Disciple, the show where I help you follow Jesus daily. This week, as I said, we're jumping into three misconceptions that you, or maybe some of your friends, might have about Christianity, so let's jump right into it. The first misconception is, you see, young squire, Christianity is really all about being a good person. Wrong. That is wrong. Also, I don't know what that accent was, but we'll just push that aside. The problem is, is that if you ask the average Christian within a church, that might be their answer. They might say, you know what, Christianity is just about being a good person so you can go to heaven. And that's really sad. And it's a sad misconception because if Christianity is just about being a good person, people can look at it and say, well, that works for you, but I like Buddhism. Buddhism helps me be a good person or atheism helps me be a good person. You see, if it's just about being a good person, then there's really no weight to it because you can just choose something else. But when we actually investigate what the Bible says, we actually find out that not only does the Bible say we are bad people, but it says we are are dead in our trespasses and sins and then when you investigate further you find out that the solution is not okay hey try again be a better person this time no it's that we cannot be good on our own but that is why Jesus came to this earth fully God and fully man to die on the cross to take the punishment we deserve for our own sins against God he rose again on the third day and he transforms our heart of stone into a heart of flesh now we obey him and we follow him not not because of duty, not because we have this sense that we need to earn God's love or forgiveness or trying to be a good person, but no, we seek to honor him because we love him and we love others. Christianity is not just about being a good person. It's following the one who was good for us. Misconception number two, Christianity is just an emotional experience. Some people just need that. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, so the other side to that, some people might say, you know, most people will say, oh, Christianity is just an emotional experience where some people, some people need that kind of thing. Other people might say, look, Christianity is just purely intellectual facts that I can accept and, and that kind of thing. So let's talk about that. When we regard Christianity as just a purely emotional experience or purely intellectual acknowledgement, we're missing out on the core transformation experience that conversion is. You see, if Christianity was just about emotions, it was just about me going to a worship service and, and crying and, and feeling bad, but Jesus helps me feel better, then yeah, we could just disregard it as just kind of a, a psychological therapy almost. He's a good, good father. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is a good, good father. Preach it, brother. Preach it. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have somebody that might say, oh, Christianity is just a bunch of facts uh, that, you know, oh, this happened and this happened and this happened that you can either accept or reject. Well, after much research and study, I've concluded that the only falsifiable argument in all of the world is Christianity. I, I, my sensibilities would be vanquished if I were not able to accept the fact that Christianity is true. I must acknowledge that, yes, the facts of the Bible are, are relatively accurate. Well, the first thing is that Christianity engages with both the emotions and the intellect. We see the Bible talking about rejoicing in the Lord, to delight in the Lord. Those are emotions. Those are good emotions. Talks all the time about being joyful, even in the midst of our trials. Look, Christianity does not disregard 
regard the emotion. When we think of the intellect, we think of verses like, always be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. Intellectual knowledge of defending the faith through apologetics. The Bible's not just like, well, you know, or God's just not, oh, well, you know, you can just be emotional and never really use your reason or simply use your reason and never be emotional, be stone-hearted. No, they engage with both these aspects of humans. And that gets me into this. When we think of Christianity, it's not just an emotional experience. It's not just an intellectual experience. It's a transformative experience. You see, it wasn't us that all of a sudden decided to, oh my goodness, uh, you know, the reason and my knowledge of everything, it led me to this point where I'm like, you know what? I understand everything about Christianity and it makes sense. That might be somebody's testimony, but there's something else at work there. It is God. And like, likewise, somebody could go to a worship service and say, I was really emotionally impacted and that's what drew me to Christianity. There's something else at work there. It is God. So it's not about necessarily just the individual intellectual acknowledgement or uh, emotional experience. No, it's the transformation that happens through the Holy Spirit in our lives lives. It is God. Okay, now for the third and final misconception about Christianity that I'm going to cover today. Yeah, man, those Christians, bro. Yeah, they just think they're better than everyone else. Okay, as much as I would like to just say, no, that's wrong, that's not true. The facts are that a lot of Christians think they're better than other people, non-Christians. They think they're better. I mean, I'm a pretty great guy. I serve at my local church. I walk old ladies across the street. I dwell on God's word day and night. You know, I, I, I know there is a lot of Christians watching. And so maybe you've been watching this video. You're like, hey, get him. Yeah, that's a misconception. That's a misconception. Um, but now you're like, oh man, I, this is the part of the show where I got to check my own heart. Me too. Like me too. Like I'm with you. Um, sometimes we can get in the space of being like the Pharisee, you know, when he says, oh God, thank you that I'm not like this terrible tax collector over here. Uh, we can get self-righteous. Our pride wants to have any opportunity to, you know, dwell up in us, whether it's like, I'm just proud that I'm such a good Christian and I'm going to church and I'm such a nice guy. Like, what message are we sending to non-believers when we act that pridefully? You see, a Christian is just one beggar who has found bread, living bread, showing another beggar where that bread can be found. You see, just because one beggar found the bread first doesn't mean that that other beggar who has yet to find it is less than or worse. And that's not to say as Christians that we don't believe that we're right in terms of our following of Jesus. No, of course we believe that's right, but in terms of a moral um, standard, we're not any better morally, we're not better people than non-Christians. That's not what it's about. It's about finding that ultimate forgiveness in Jesus. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos every single week. You can follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, on all the different places because I'm doing stuff there. Anyway, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon right now. I have 12 patrons on Patreon. It is a humongous blessing. And if you want to help me do this part time or almost full time, um, help me on Patreon, support the ministry. And that would be humongous. Head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple link in description. Thanks so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.